Hi there, this is Dr. Samurai, a professor in Japan specializing in international social pathology. The topic of today's my minute lecture is Ms. Janine Jones. Okay, let's start with the first half of the general information on her, okay? Between 1970 and 1987, 70 to 87, so 17 years, right? She, as a registered nurse, killed more than 60 infants at hospitals. And she got a life sentence. Parole is going to be available when she is 87 years old. Uh, let's talk about more detail about her, okay? She was adopted after three kids were already adopted by rich nightclub owner couples. So they must have been nice, you know, uh, adoptive parents. So they have uh, uh, four kids in total adopted. Janine was uh, mentally very... Uh, naive she uh, often cried when she was told something very uh, critical and severe her father liked the oldest uh, daughter lisa the best at least janini felt that way so janini hated lisa and this unfriendly relationship lasted until Lisa went out of the house for her own marriage but right after that she started to have some sort of a conflicting relationship with her domineering adoptive mother so sounds like he and two of those troublesome relationships within the same family <clears throat> there must have been some reason on her side she must have had something inside that was troublesome making friends with others her family life was never peaceful okay we kind of have to imagine her childhood okay against her mother, against her oldest sister. Family life was never peaceful, okay? And she cried very often and she had a difficult time. When she was young, you know, she was never attractive girl, chubby, and always uh, bullying people around her. She had this uh, obsessive desire to be highly evaluated by others. This obsession of hers with her reputation and evaluation was somewhat pathological, okay? So I guess she once wrote in her letter that uh, those who attack others may be feeling she did not have something that the other people have. I think she was talking about herself she thought something is lacking in herself so that is why she had to be aggressive to be respected by others that makes sense something was missing that could be partly the fact that uh, she was put out for adoption in the first place. This is interesting and very I informative. And listen to this. She was a pathological liar, uh, saying something like she is related to a very popular band, Monkeys, always lying that she was discriminated against other brothers. She kept saying all those things to kind of attract attention. And when one of her younger brothers died because of the accident, she cried out openly at the funeral. Then, right after the funeral, she went to school and she was glad to be treated specially because other people sympathized with uh, her sorrow of missing her brother. But remember, originally 
she was always saying she was discriminated against those brothers, right? So that, that crying was a lie too. After the brother's death, then her father died. She got married with the uh, average level, not outstanding person. And she learned to be popular by having sex with uh, multiple men. She learned having sexual intercourse was a good weapon to be popular, to fill her emptiness in her mind. So she, she already had some hole in her mind, okay? After she got her uh, job as, as a uh, registered nurse, she was often criticized that she kind of uh, yeah, commented on things that uh, she has no experience of or no education about. You know, her ego went over her qualification at hospital. And when six day old you know, little baby passed, she was, you know, she was crying like crazy right in front of her senior doctors. Those doctors at the time inexperienced kind of a, uh, bought her kindness and, and the passion for the patients that she was in charge of very highly. In other words, she was, she bought respect from her seniors by pretending like she loved that late baby. Because she liked it, she kept killing babies on and on and on by keep changing her hospitals. Hospitals started to receive the reports that similar types of uh, unusual and natural deaths of babies are increasing. There's a syndrome called Munchausen in which the patient injured herself or makes herself sick intentionally to draw attention and sympathy from others. It's called Munchausen syndrome. But uh, when she does that on not on herself but on other children and babies and uh, elderly, handicapped and also uh, patients, all those who are dependent on her. It is called uh, Munchausen by proxy. Munchausen by proxy. Okay? They keep doing that sick act just to uh, keep attracting others attention to her. Janini's case was exactly that. Munchausen by proxy. Her life was uh, started inferiority complex for being put in out for adoption, always compared with other adopted sisters and brothers, and confrontation against her adoptive mother. Okay, but those are kind of a uh, substantial things. Life was started out by being abandoned as adopted kid and uh, you know always compared with other adopted kids and uh, didn't get along with adoptive mother always confronting to each other. So those stack up of negative things she must have had a pathological hero complex to be the center of attention. She must maintain being the center of people's attention to feel like she is alive and she is okay because of all those things she missed which all the other kids normally had. All she did after she became a nurse, those uh, murders on babies were done just to fill in what she felt missing in her life when she was a little child, you know, just to fill in what was missing in her childhood. She killed other babies to be appreciated as a saver, you know, but the 60 innocent babies passed to fill her empty hearts. From here, I would like to move on to the second half of the genie that I know. When I first contacted her, her reply was like, it was my first time to receive a letter from a you know, university professor. 
most of the people who want to contact me or those who want to make money by writing about me. So I try not to uh, answer any questions written in those letters. So what you see and read at the true crime corner of bookstores, they are filled with lies because I have never answered straightforward to their questions. At this moment, I am not physically good condition, so I have to go through uh, some operation. But uh, once I settle down, I would like to write you back. It was very uh, thoughtful uh, letter and you know very considerate letter to me. It didn't seem like a letter from a woman who killed 60 babies, to be honest with you. But uh, also to be honest with you, she was the only person I hesitated to write and contact to guys who did uh, violent acts and things. I kind of understand and I can read the you know, uh, mechanism and dynamics of why they did that. But the female who killed the babies, it was kind of a, an exceptional uh, existence in my uh, most contacts, to be honest. But anyway, after her operation was over, she kindly wrote back to me as she promised, which I appreciated, okay? I think I, at the time I wrote about this uh, female professor who was always competitive to me, you know, uh, harassing me by using other guys, you know, professors, saying that uh, I was blah, 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 but you know what? I never say I am perfect, but since I am doing this type of research to at least uh, want to make this society better, at the core of myself, there is justice. That means I do things over myself for uh, something more important okay but uh, i just could not believe all those uh, uneducated uh, illiterate people about uh, who people really are among the academia not personally but i think japan is uh, way behind america we do not know you know we at least have one two four psychopath in 100 people. We don't have that kind of information out either. We still think we are living in a happy village society. So I don't blame them, but they have to learn. I'm gonna talk about it later. But I talked about her and she gave me a good advice. And she goes like this. Those people who start to attack others usually do not have what you do not have well, either materially or emotionally so the best way to deal with those people with distorted mind is to confront them and deal with them with the firm resolution and never back down I thought it was a very uh, instructive advice. I assume maybe she was talking a little bit about herself when she was younger. She also told me that at the time she was getting very close to her first parole hearing and there was high possibility of being released. And she said lately she kept receiving letters saying that uh, once you are out, I will make sure I'm going to put the bullet in your temple and stuff like that. That's a clear threat. But uh, she was complaining that police wouldn't even want to move their finger. And she also told those officers in charge of uh, males that uh, those males without uh, clear return address Please don't give it. And she said that, uh, as you know it very well, I very recently had this uh, big uh, hours of operation, so I would like to finish this letter, you know, around here. It would be very nice if we could see each other, you know, someday very close. She also uh, said that uh, lately uh, uh, there are too many, you know, betrayal correspondents who uh, pretend like 
writing to me as a good caring person but uh, later she put my drawing that I uh, sent her as a uh, part of my courtesy on the web site to sell at the high price. It's very uh, sick because they approach me uh, as a good Samaritan then they bite me like a snake. So I am trying to be very careful about the communication nowadays. So uh, I may put a little bit of interval with you too, but uh, please understand my current situation. I understood the situation. I wrote back anyway. I never failed to uh, write back on my side until they stopped writing to me. Because I thought that's a you know, least courtesy as a human being. And I wrote and she wrote me back again. She goes, in America, there are too many who uh, approach me, get something from me to sell on the website. But uh, I honestly laugh out loud when I read your message saying that oh don't worry nobody knows Janini Jones in Japan probably ex except for me so there's no way I can sell your stuff at uh, any price over here in Japan she said she laughed out loud you know I think uh, that message of mine made her feel kind of uh, secure and trust me and uh, honestly I wouldn't do things like that. I'm uh, doing this report, but like I said at the very beginning of this series, I am not intending to uh, hurt uh, my uh, corresponding uh, thug friends with respect. At the same time, I try not to encourage what they did and try not to hurt the victims further. Those are three major rules that I try to stick with no matter what. So. I try not to betray her either, although I do not like what she did when she was young, okay? She uh, continued, you know, human betrayal really hurt people's minds. Uh, based upon the way you write, I probably think you understand what I'm talking about. After 34 years of uh, prison life, I might be able to be out in the society after all and i try to think of this as god's intention i would very much like the idea that we would meet somewhere but uh, because of their health check problems i would be passed around at multiple you know medical institutions so i am not sure whether i will be so uh, there's a possibility that you, you may not hear from me for a while, but uh, please believe that someone in Texas who is praying your happiness from the bottom of my heart, okay? And that was the end of the communication we had. She seemed to be honest person, you know, in the letter. But I also uh, noticed that she never touched her past. She only limited what she writes to what is happening right now. And she only showed me her kind side. People always have bright side and dark side, even me. That's the human beings, okay? In and the end, the balance everybody has. No person has only good side. This is true. And I, I also uh, noticed that uh, she was getting very sensitive to uh, uh, betrayals she was receiving at the time. Mm -hmm. Okay? And here's what I thought about our communication. There's no doubt that the uh, basis of our society is established by women who raise kids when they form their uh, personalities i mean uh, during those critical periods also still in japan there's strong belief that women are weak and women are somebody we have to protect from you know something negative that's a traditional idea you know, in our country so it is still a taboo to even discuss the aggressiveness inner aggressiveness that the female embrace 
inside. But in America, which we are unconsciously following, female aggression, in other words, you know, maleness of female, a big social issue now. I'm sure Japanese society is steadily going after that, copying it, wanting it, or unwanting it. Let's think about today's uh, types of jobs we have. There's no much difference between what the guys do and what the women do, right? Desk works and canvassing and all those things. We do not need muscles no more, right? Truth is, there are too many cases of power harassment by female as well by pretending to be somebody weak. And uh, it is well worn out device used by female today. Okay? I am not despising women. I'm only talking about truth, the facts, as a social pathologist. Are you familiar with the hashtag Karen? This is a humongous social issues right after, not right after, simultaneous with the Black Lives Matter. Hashtag Karen is something like a white lady who is supposed to be weak, pure, and beautiful, used their image in a negative way to take in the police to attack on black male that they do not like. And that type of incidents has been happening so many times in the United States now as U.S. society is now in a great confusion due to so many reasons. And that type of hashtag Karen cases went on and on and on in the Fortunately, by recording it by cell phone, those who did it lost their jobs or socially criticized or, you know, punished socially, leading to their failure in their own business and stuff like that, which never happened before. You know why this kind of things happen there? Because harassment and bullying today happen by who deceives the most power and who deceives the most number of people okay so if i go to extreme those who can perform as a weak person all the way will win in this game of harassment and bullying in today's society but uh, it is a good sign that you know a hashtag karen thing started to be judged correctly socially okay remember Janine Jones used to uh, cry when she was uh, little, although she was as strong as confronting against his adoptive mother. Crying in public does never show their weak. I repeat, crying and weeping in public never shows their weakness, rather their cunningness. Okay, I faced that kind of situation so many times and it was only me who could tell that all the other people were deceived okay because they do not have literacy of telling who the person really is Janini's weeping and crying was probably to uh, put her father on her side if we would like to have truly equal society between men and women as Ms. Janini herself was saying we have to make the rules very clear and we have to face issues firmly with resolution I repeat it again okay we have to face issues firmly with the solid resolution that's it okay and it's about time we all need to know things like that are happening okay so i personally believe today everybody need to learn literacy about society about uh, organization and about uh, how person acts to deceive others betray others 
we need literacy about human beings cause too many liars are popping up in this bureaucratic society at the same time we need to have to do something some operation social operation to uh, fix so that uh, women with the true ability can use their ability constructively not just being as a housewife and uh, stacking up the frustration inside this is regardless of uh, being male or female this is urgent business to make sure that our society is a society who can tell a lie and truth to produce something constructive and positive but uh, most of the people in the society judges people based upon their own relationship with the person never think about the whole picture of the society of the world but that will come back to you sooner or later when you have power that works good to you but it doesn't happen all the time that way sometimes the other side have power and that's when you start to feel what I'm talking about is true so we have to make the society fair that uh, right party always win and those who lied lose this is rules of nature okay in other words today's informational society is a society in which liar can win we can never allow this to happen we have to set up some firm safety net to stop that from happening right away i repeat right away and at the same time we have to make sure as a society to allow mothers to have plenty of time to form attachment between her and her babies I mean, we have to make sure as a society that mother can be together with their babies for at least the first two years fully together during those critical periods so that we can make sure our future society is safe. Cause those who did not receive love and peace during those critical periods can be very dangerous element in the society which i can state with full confidence okay and lastly i would like to repeat those who make sure the basis of human personality that's the basis of society are made by female and mother so we have to pay special attention to to them especially for the first four years when they have little babies okay this is pretty much it against my expectation i uh, could learn more than i expected from ms jones and i appreciate it pretty much and i hope i gave you some information you could uh, think about when you have some you know time okay so up until next time please have a wonderful time whether with your loved ones or whether with yourself okay so let's see you next time bye bye now